Hey everybody, it's Double RPG here, and welcome back to another episode of Double RPG Let's Play with the Le- What? The Legend of Zelda? No, this is not Zelda time, this is Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 time. So yeah, hey everybody, it's Double RPG here, and to be a bit more realistic, welcome back to another episode of Double RPG Let's Play with Ninja Gaiden Sigma 2 on the PlayStation 3. In today's episode, we are here at the Statue of Liberty, where we are going to explore upwards of it, and we are going to confront Alexei, finally. So, anyway, why do you say we not waste any more time and get on with this episode that's already in progress, shall we? And we need to go inside where the Statue of Liberty is being held, and we are going to confront more of the fiends and more of the Black Spider Ninjas while we're here, and I think we'll also be able to get a new weapon, if I'm not mistaken. And here's a heal point, which we definitely needed after that little... <laughs> after that little... Oh, God. That little embarrassment of a fight from the previous episode. Okay, here's some incinerary shuriken right there, but I don't think we can get these in this uh, at this part of the game, or I don't think we can get them right now, but, uh, but I think we do get them later at some point. So, yeah, lots of... Oh! Here is the newest weapon in the game that was not introduced in the original Ninja Gaiden Sigma... Uh, I mean, in the original Ninja Gaiden 2. Here we got Enma's Fang, which is the, um... Was, uh... Which is basically the... This game's equivalent of the Dabalaro Blade from the... From Ninja Gaiden Sigma. So, we are going to equip it for right now, since we have it on our hands. And it's time for us to use a big sword for once. And I think now is the perfect time to do so. Since we have not even used any big swords in this game by far, so... Might be a good time to use it, huh? And we can't even dis uh, destroy any of these things right here. But we can grab this. And what do we get? Oh, the Vigor of Mythology. Oh, the Book of Genesis. So, a little bit about the inside about the mythology of the Vigor Empire. So let's go ahead and read it. In the beginning, a great inconsistency flowed out into the nothing, a nothing that was afraid of its own nothingness. A pure terror without color, without sound, without smell, it formed the root of all defecation. Ew! And eventually, it coalesced. Is that how it's said? Coalesced? I think so. It coalesced into the shape of the first deity, Gurdu. Gurdu gave birth to all elements and provided them with, or with order and function. In a remote area of space from where Gurdu provided order, there existed the territory of a chaos formed from elements within shape. This chaos, which had been forgotten during the blessings of Gurdu, existed at first as only an instinctual fear. But eventually the chaos began to take shape, and, an, and a consciousness was formed within it. At first, this was just a small envious presence, but eventually it grew and became clear. This marked the, the appearance of the hatred. The chaotic nature of the hatred further evolved it, bringing it to the level of a deity. Thus, the ancestor of all archfiends, Vigor, came into being, and the first conflict was set into motion. The Book of Evil Deities, the ancestor of all archfiends, Vigor, began to devour the territory of Gurdu, beginning at the, its center. During endless solar and lunar eclipses, the earth shook and split. The seas dried up only to flood into existence again. An intense wind swept over everything and fires burned down all the existence, ignoring even the concept of time itself. Eventually, Gurdu lost his strength, and the world once again plunged into the chaos from which it had come. Then, a great change occurred. During the throes of the in unending destruction, the body of Gurdu himself split into four, each becoming part of a deity himself, controlling sentiment, wisdom, and immorality, and creation. Eventually, they would come together to restore shape to the world again, but in their panic-stricken state after their birth, still they still had little power. The Book of Dragons In this age of pandemonium, the serpent, deity of creation, was the only one of the deities who managed to keep some semblance of sanity. The serpent gave birth to, to a tiny presence, something that no other being would even notice, the seeds of life. Those seeds managed to take hold and grow into a storm of into the storm of chaos, and ever so slightly began to evolve, it, eventually becoming thirteen dragons. Those destinies were to be found in battle. The dragons waged an endless battle against Figur, who never ceased in his attempts to bring the world into a maelstrom of hatred. Eventually, the dragons were able to banish Figur to the very ends of the world. However, it was. It was at this time that the youngest and lowest in position of the dragons, the Dark Dragon, summoned the hatred within its feelings of inferiority. Or inferior, yeah, inferior, yeah, inferiority. Gosh, some of these words I can't even, not even pronounce. Due to this betrayal, Vigur was able to keep from being completely destroyed. The Book of the Fiends. 
The Dark Dragon, now full of evil intent, joined, the vi joined with Vigura and his spawn of evil deities to further his advance into the territory of Gurdu. This conflict continued throughout the eons of history, and during the struggle, the first spark of human life appeared in the form of the ancient tribes. Of course, old conflicts are not easily revolved, and even within the age of ancient tribes, the dragon lineage and archfiends continued their battle for tens of thousands of generations. The struggle finally ended when the members of the dragon lineage were able to seal away the archfiends and their spawn. However, during this age of chaos, all the bloodlines of the ancient tribes were mixed, and the legacy of the ancients have, has been carried on carried on by us, the fiends. The Book of the Future The land that the archfiend Vigor once held as his fi final territory has become this, the land of Vigor. This land was also where the dark dragon committed his act of treachery, and where the ancient tribes lived. This was, this is why, or that is why their descendants, we fiends, have taken control of these lands. With this land as a barrier, the power of Vigor is, for now, limited only to this earth. Vigur is the demon of destruction and the deity who creates history. When the, when the decadence of this world has reached the breaking point, he will return in a blaze of, cleans, of cleansing flame and recreate the world. Chaos, like a flood bursting the banks of a great river, with, will fill this world once again, and we will be the first recipients of this bounty. Evolution has and always will begin from here. The Land of Vigor. It has been several hundred years since the supreme fiend Go, or Gogon, Gogon established what would eventually become the Vigor Empire here in these lands. If a new warrior of the dragon lineage should appear, the Holy Emperor shall be infused with the power of the Archfiends. After seven days from the, re from the reuniting of His Majesty with the Dark Dragon, we fiends will be blessed with, the, with an exquisite harmony. Wow. That is quite a history that the, that the fiends or the Vigor Empire has. So, yeah, that, that is, that, that's quite a bit of mythology. So, yeah, that was a pretty good history lesson that we got to learn from the Vigor Empire. So, I don't think this has any relevance for the rest of the plot, but it definitely has mentioned something about the history between the Dragon Lineage and the Archfiends. So, yeah. But I'm not sure if we're going to be able to see another one of these things again, but evidently we'll just have to play it by ear. But we probably will, but it's just kind of hard to say at this point. Gosh. Here, why don't you just take that? That that's that's my final gift for you. Hey, you don't do that. Here, why don't you come over here? <laughs> you get away from me! God. God, it's hard to use the obliteration technique on something like this, but evidently we can use that. It's the ultimate technique, or the technique of ultimate guidance. And we managed to execute it perfectly. Man, I didn't even think that most of this episode was going to pretty much take up our time reading the Vigor mythology. I'm not even sure if I'll have to split this into two episodes or not, but yeah, that was kind of weird. Okay, something somebody's following me. Oh, I see, it's coming from right over there, so we actually need to go this way. Yeah, I don't know what that was about. Okay, go ahead and use the wall. Hey! hell was that? Ryu, do it right this time, buddy. There. There we go. Wonder, <laughs> I can't believe I missed that. That. Okay. There. Go ahead and use that. And that takes care of them. Okay, now we can finally go out here. And we're going to get a bit more inside, or a bit more, yeah, a bit more inside on the architecture from outside of the building. I think we want to go up this way, because there are some enemies that are just up over these stairs that we can take care of. <laughs> Indeed, there are! And they're waiting to give us a rude awakening, these guys, again. Oh, here we go! I use the obliteration technique on you all. Hey, get off me! Get off me! You don't do that! Gosh, jerks. You're not gonna do that again! Here, take that! <laughs> Dude! Hey! 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 Get off me! You suck! You're you you are fated to be my rival. You don't do that. God, you suck! I cannot believe you do such a thing. 
Gosh, what is up with these guys? That they, they really didn't give me that much trouble when I was playing this game beforehand, but evidently they are now. Ugh, my Jesus, man. Okay, so we're done with them. Now we can finally go up here, which is just surrounding the architecture of where the statue is standing at. But evidently, we can only go in from one way. Oh, cool. We gotta fight some more of these guys. Goody. Not really looking forward to this, but... Oh well, what can you do? Get up here. Hey, you're close to us, so you stay down. Evidently, we need to go in that way, but let's go ahead and check around this place a bit more, because I'm pretty sure they're gonna be popping up from other places. Or is there something that we're missing? I... Uh, no? I guess we're done here, so let's go ahead and head inside. <laughs> that was quite a uh, unexpected occurrence. I thought there was going to be more that were going to pop up. Okay, so it's time for us to give these guys a rude awakening by having Inmus Fang do our dirty work. And that sword is pretty powerful, so make sure you make good use of that weapon. Rightfully so. so. Okay, what are we getting here? Oh, lives of the Thousand Gods. Good, good. Just what we needed. We need a life increase, that's for sure. Sure, it might not have been much, but it works. And I think we need to come this way, because I think one of the Black Spider Ninjas is giving us trouble from down there. Go ahead and head down here, and you're obliterated. Thank you. And I really don't think there's anything else that we can find up at this place, but... Uh, I'll go up and check again just to make sure, but instinct has it that there's not really m that much anything else inside this room. Yep, I didn't think so, so let's go ahead and head back down. And we don't need to stand on those beams any further, and I don't know why I'm jumping between them, but the way that we need to go up is we need to do the bird flips here, and what it equates to be like an elevator, or just something that's decorative for show? I don't know. But evidently, we needed to come up this way. Okay, is there something down there? I know it's the blockade towards the next level, but nope. I thought there might have been something of great importance, but evidently there's not. And we're going up some more stairs, and it's going to be long-lasting by trying to get up to where Lady Liberty is. Gosh! You guys suck! Here, take that. <laughs> Chopped your body in half. And I did a good number on you, but you did not die. Now you died. Gosh. And, wait a minute, there's another one? Wait, there's there was two? What's up with these guys? And there's some of those fiends, those winged fiends that we can pretty much obliterate. Right, wait a minute, where are more of these spider... Where, where are these uh, black spider ninjas coming from? Oh, Jesus. Would you die, 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 die. And they're... Ugh, you did not die yet! Dude, you suck. God, you guys suck. Get over here. There, finally took care of you. Okay, so now we can go ahead and we can take care of the ones that are out here. And thank God we have an unlimited amount of arrows to do the job here. And we got ourselves another Lives of the Thousand Gods, so we'll definitely take that. Okay, now let's go up these stairs. And now this is where things start to get a little bit more interesting in terms of the pathways that we can take up to get to Lady Liberty's head. We'll get there. But now, since we are here, we might as well restock up on health items because of that uh, atrocious showing from that one boss that has really tough armor. God, that was embarrassing. <laughs> I do apologize, guys, but yeah, that was a really embarrassing display. But, what can I say? Might as well just uh, forget about it and move on, right? Yeah, I thought so. What do we get here? Oh, another book about the Greater Fiends. And it's part two. Eventually, the tension between the four fiend rulers evolved into fierce battle. The world was plunged into chaos, as through hell had erupted on Earth. This infernal conflict drew the attention of one of the archfiends known as Vazda, 
Slowly he arose from his deep slumber to observe the commotion. Lord Va Vazda's gaze, Vazda's gaze, alighted upon a man, a lone human who plummeted into the deep abyss of the archfiend's stare. I wonder who that was. I don't know. I wonder who the archfiend we're going to be battling against in Ninja Gaiden 3 is going to be. I mean, we did v deal with the Holy Vigur Emperor from from the first Ninja Gaiden, and now we're dealing with this one, whoever his name is. Is it Vazda or is it somebody else? I don't know. Anyway, we're now at the crown where Lady Liberty's head is. So, we finally made it up top. So, looks like we're going to be fighting Alexei. I recognize that stink. The repugnant stench of the dragon lineage. The final lament of an ancient creature. That's death you smell. You humans have the lifespan of flies. I have experienced things your feeble minds could never comprehend. The music of the spheres echoing through the cosmos. You may call me the four greater fiends and master of lightning. So here we go with our first boss battle against one of the greater fiends. So yes, we're fighting against Alexei, who is voiced by Robin Atkin Downs, and he actually does pretty. He actually has a good voice for this character. Oh, but uh, yeah, now's not the time. We're fighting since we're fighting against the Master of Lightning, so we might as well spend all of our time trying to do a number on this guy. And he can be quite tough, but for the most part, he's really not that bad. But just make sure you have healing items on you because you want to make sure you're in top physical condition when you're trying to do a number on him. And see, he's really not that tough, as I've been saying. And look at the look at the look at the uh, look at the stage that he's created for us. I mean, you thought you'd be fighting on top of the Statue of Liberty, but no. Obviously, you're fighting in this force field, which acts as the stage. Get off me! Get off me! God, man, what was that? What was that about? You're not gonna grab me again. That that was embarrassing. You gonna die yet? Here, finally. Come on. Come on! Let me finish you off! You don't want to die, do you? Okay, finally, I got you. Such is the fragility of evil. Well, evidently, that was not the end of the boss fights, as we're going to be fighting against Lady Liberty. But well, we pretty much need to get out of the way for now, because Lady Liberty is going to go into the water where we can actually do battle against her. You know, it's at times like these, you make it makes you think like you're fighting against Godzilla or an enemy from the Godzilla universe. And, you know what, that actually would be pretty cool if Ryu Hayabusa ended up fighting against somebody, or fighting against Godzilla, in a sense. <laughs> I, that, that'd be really awesome. I think Ryu versus Godzilla or Mecha Godzilla would make a really cool match. But yes, Lady Liberty is a boss for sure. And I, something tells me she's not going to be that forgiving as the boss against the Buddha statue. <laughs> because she's using lightning that Alexei has apparently manipulated her with. And it's going to be doing quite a number on us. And we'll just need to make sure that we're careful and we don't get hurt by the lightning or else we're going to pretty much have to use our healing items again, which definitely seems to be the case. Come on. Oh, dang it. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. Dang it. Get out of the way. Yeah, she's not going to be forgiving, but I guess it's time for us to get even. So I think the 
uh, rules pretty much apply the same. Just take down one of the arms, and then and then the others will be taken down. But of course, watch out for the lightning because that could pose to be quite a problem. Oh, so we did manage to get her to. Uh, no, oh, we did manage to wound her somehow, but evidently I think we need to go for the other arm. I think that's where it was directing us at, because if we take down the other arm, then we should be able to remove... Con yes, we do. We remove complete control of... Oh, I see. We had to use the Fiend's Bane bow to take down the uh, control on the arm. Hey, come on! We're gonna get you out of control. Okay, finally. She's down for the count. Now we can use the final... We can use this opportunity to land the final blow. 